everyone, it's Carrie from Virtually Carrie, and today we're doing another live episode of Banner Live. So today we're gonna learn from uh, Miss Richie on how to be an in-demand voice account virtual assistant even during these times. As you know, we're having a worldwide pandemic and this has affected so many people, um, so many jobs, so many families so now is really the perfect time to work online and explore more um opportunities by the way um if you're wondering um i'm here i'm here in our balcony so it's a bit sunny i have to wear my i have to wear my glasses um while doing the live uh it's currently oh, um, so, so many jobs in Hamburg, Germany. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and introduce Ricky. Ricky is the founder and owner of We Do The Talk Incorporated, and he is also a business sales and development strategist and an online freelancer and entrepreneur since 2010. Wow, it's been 10 years, Ricky. Yes, it was actually my uh, 10th year anniversary last April 10. Wow, congrats. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's a long time. It's a uh, one decade, right? Okay, so um, Richie will have a presentation for today. So she's going to discuss more about the topic. And afterwards, we will have a short Q&A. So I invite every one of you to drop down your, your questions in the comments and we'll be answering them. All right, so Ricky, I'll, um, okay, I'll go ahead and transfer the broadcast to you. Okay, so let me see here. All right, so I, uh, this is actually just a very general presentation of um, understanding what is a voice account. So for those who are um, uh, asking what exactly are the jobs behind uh, being a virtual assistant in a voice account, all right? So let me just, uh, okay. So basically when you are uh, a basic voice account virtual assistant, uh, there are three, I would say, category for you to um, to be uh, to, to belong to. So we have customer service, we have appointment setting, and then we have telemarketing. So customer service is basically uh, you do the assistance and advice provided by a company to those people who buy or use its products or services. As we all know, a lot of us is actually using this. Uh, if you're calling um, uh, locally, of course, um, you're calling telco, uh, whoever is your internet provider, your bank, uh, you are calling their uh, customer hotline. So for so that is customer service. So those who are uh, answering the phone, they are the customer service support. Um, so basically, they provide assistance to to all the customer of that specific company they belong to, and then. Appointment setter or appointment setting basically is a member of the sales function of a business whose primary responsibility is to contact leads, pre-qualify them, and persuade them to agree to appointments with uh, sales representatives to discuss the company's products or services. So when you say appointment setting, it could be uh, a phone appointment or a face-to-face -face appointment for some. Uh, basically, you are pers uh, persuading them to uh, book a time uh, with your client. And then telemarketing or tele being a telemarketer, these are exactly salespeople who are employed by a company to telephone people in order to persuade them to buy the company's products or services. So we are always... Um, able to hear that um, we are always receiving a phone call on that so let's just understand each of them okay and when you say uh, uh, when you say voice account there are two types of that so inbound and outbound so well let, let's um, discuss further 
Inbound call is one that a customer initiates, so a call center or a contact center. A help desk handles inbound calls as well, although calls may be made from employees rather than customers. So inbound, uh, those who are calling us, um, well, you are the one, uh, I mean, the customer is the one initiating the call. So what are those types of inbound call, appointment scheduling? Um, best example of that is if you are calling a clinic, so that is appointment scheduling. Someone will answer you and then set you an appointment uh, with the doctor. So answering services. So um, if a company is running a 24-7 um, schedule, then you are uh, being hired as the answering service. Order taking services, of course, um, that is an inbound because you are being called to place an order, uh, uh, whatever, a restaurant, there are fast food chain or uh, uh, grab food, I don't know. <laughs> so, so those are uh, order taking services. And then direct response call center. So, well, we are mostly hearing that um, help the support after sales services, so customer care services. That's an example of inbound um, call. And then outbound call is you are the one, um, the, the agent or the call center will, will be calling on behalf of the call center. They are calling their customers. So typical outbound calls include telemarketing, sales or fundraising, surveys, as well as calls for contact list updating, surveys or verification services so um, some of the examples are hr and recruiting telecom mortgage research and, anal and analytics um, uh, banking and financial uh, for for some assistance of course travel and ticketing healthcare, which is very very busy at the moment logistics and insurance insurance i'm actually in the industry of insurance so what are the industries that outsource? What are the industries that outsource? So um, multinational companies, they, they really outsource. Uh, I am actually uh, contracted now with two uh, large companies in the US, telecommunication companies, telco, well, that's forever. Uh, of course, internet services, uh, that includes in, that is included in telco. Here in the Philippines, PLDT, um, Globe, uh, US, AT&T, DirecTV, those are continuously hiring, even in pandemic uh, that we're having right now, continuously hiring. The government of a country, they are outsourcing, believe it or not, they are outsourcing. I am um, working for a certain county in, in uh, California and Arizona, they are, they are hiring. Defense and security department. So they are basically hiring companies with a large and varied uh, customer base. Um, they, they are also hiring e-commerce stores specific at the moment. They are um, assisting after sales, cancellations, um, sales fulfillment. So those are also part of um, the industries that hires nowadays. Insurance companies, uh, I am working with one of the large company uh, in the US. Um, hello, my FFL family. <laughs> Retail companies and then travel and tourism uh, companies. They are, they are hiring, uh, they, are, they are outsourcing, okay? And then let's discuss about opportunities and income projection or career projection with voice accounts. So uh, this is actually um, not updated, but uh, if you are looking to uh, become a voice account uh, virtual assistant, these are the figures that you might want to look at. Uh, but this is really not updated. Uh, I would say let, let's put another dollar on top of this one. Uh, this is um, a figure in uh, September 28th based on based on that September 28, 2018. Uh, the uh, average or the range typically falls between $15 to $19 per 
in the U.S. when it comes to customer survey. So our hourly rate can vary widely depending on many important factors, including education, certification. Yes, uh, voice account also have some certification that you need to, to pass. So in the Philippines, uh, basically, if you are uh, coming from call center or BPO, you can start providing customer service. A lot of job posts nowadays, customer service representative, because a lot of uh, companies are trying to transition to home base as well because of, again, the pandemic, uh, the worldwide pandemic. So uh, the basic startup, I would say most of the company are posting is $5 an hour. But of course, if you are skilled and you know how to to um, negotiate and really offer your skills, then it could be more than that. So imagine if you are uh, getting an average of five, you can start with that, for, especially those who uh, are now um, not uh, earning because of some sort of, um, uh, of what, because so suddenly here in the Philippines, a lot are actually uh, wasn't able to really go to work because of the lockdown. So you can start um, offering your service as a customer service representative and start with $5 per hour. You can work part-time, you can work full-time, and you can earn twenty to 40000 per month. And most of the time, it's being paid weekly. So imagine you're earning 5000 to 10000 per week. And then for appointment setting, um, in the U.S., it's an average of 14 per hour this was last year, but it also will vary by experience and location, all right? Um, also, I would say if you're uh, doing this more than uh, five years, then again, uh, you can offer or you can always ask uh, to negotiate with regards to your rate. This is usually paid by hour. Uh, you can start with $7 per hour on average. But of course, you have to show um, productivity. You have to show result, quality and quantity wise. So uh, if you are going to start with uh, appointment setting, then you can earn seven to 14,000 per week and that's 28,000 to 56,000 dollars per, uh, no, uh, 28,000 to 56,000 pesos per month. And on top of that, you are earning bonuses, incentives, a lot of clients are very generous when it comes to sending or um, you know uh, adding incentives and bonuses or a commission, especially if you're on, if you are in insurance industry. Same with telemarketing. In the U.S., um, it's ten fifty or um, I, I encountered last week. It's actually fifteen to nineteen dollars, based on experience as well. I would say. But you can start with um, a rate of 10, uh, 15. It, it all depends on how are you going to sell yourself, I would say. But you can earn 40000 to 80000 per month. On top of that, you can earn bonuses and commissions because you're talking about say, uh, sales added to the company. And when it comes to the opportunities, you can start uh, as a customer service, handle a team of your own, be a, uh, be a project manager, team leader, and then become a project manager. This is where I uh, started my craft um, because I came from a call center. I just applied it and starting, uh, I started offering um, appointment setting. I started with uh, phone support or customer service. And then from there, I, um, I earned or I mean, I started adding skills, offering additional services. From there, I became a, I became a team leader, a project manager. And then I, um, I actually uh, included everything that I am uh, able to learn from, from that specific company that I started with. And then from there, I started offering additional services, which also uh, includes more on uh, voice. And I would say when you are really good, or I would say you are confident in in voice, or, or you're, you're uh, confident in speaking to clients, that is your great opportunity 
uh, end uh, door to close more clients and then own your own virtual services or outsourcing services, or I would say um, telemarketing services. That, that's where I started. And how are you going to do that, especially in, in the market nowadays? Um, actually, I would say when you are in voice account, this is the most um, consistent um, job or skills that you can offer. Uh, a lot of uh, companies that are transitioning from from their uh, uh, corporate to to um, out, uh, I mean, to, to home based services, then you, you can um, offer this uh, service instantly. So all you just need to do is have a professional social media account. It's a must, especially Facebook. Um, especially Facebook, even though they are uh, trying to see you on LinkedIn or they, they, they saw you on Upwork, they saw you on LinkedIn, they saw you on, on other platforms, they will definitely look for your social media account. So you must want, you might want to really have a professional social media accounts, optimize them. I will show what, I will tell you what exactly is optimizing. Uh, that, that is included in prospecting. Join communities or groups that could help you build and grow your online career, I would say. Uh, make sure that you are in the right community. Make sure that um, you are able to grow your network with clients and with the same perspective when it comes to online services or freelancing. Of course, you have to create profile on online job sites if you doesn't have any um, idea yet how to prospect clients on your of your own. Then you can create profile on online job sites like uh, Upwork.com, which is uh, where I started previously. It's Odesk, but it's now Upwork. Um, Guru.com, almost the same as uh, Upwork. Uh, what else? Um, Onlinejobs.ph. Um, th there are a lot of them, actually. LinkedIn is actually one of the best um, job sites. It's a, it's a networking, it's a network of clients and uh, companies that are already looking for you. It's just that you're not there yet, so they cannot find you yet. So build your website. There are a lot of um, drag and drop uh, website uh, or that are uh, ready to to um, uh, what, is, what do you call that a friend, friendly site to create your website. It doesn't mean that you need, you need to buy already uh, a, a, a domain or hosting. You just uh, create a um, website out of WordPress. There are templates already. Uh, on, on WordPress and also in Wix.com. So you might want to build your uh, website resume or portfolio on that. Establish good score or feedback from clients. Screenshot all of those feedback that you can get. All right. You can also ask what? Uh, you can also ask a recommendation from previous clients. And then if um, already, if you already have some funds, then you can enroll in courses that could help you master your skills or it could be your main service to, to clients. But of course, be friends with Google and YouTube. That's free. There are a lot of communities as well that offers free training. Um, Vanna has a, has a, some training as well. I, I can see because I'm part of the group. There are a lot of communities out there that could provide you training. And of course, be engaged in uh, communities that could help you uh, to update your learning. Yeah, I think that would be all. I would just like to add this one because um, I've mentioned about um, prospecting. How are you going to um, exactly optimize your profile? This is just a one of example um, here. Hello, Gladys. Uh, Gladys is actually uh, one of my Facebook friends, and um, I am following her as well, uh, how she optimized her profile. 
this is uh, an example of an optimized profile on uh, Facebook. So when we say optimized profile in a professional level, <laughs> uh, you have to make sure that you are, once they click your profile, that they can see exactly what you can do for your, for the businesses. And then, of course, how they can contact you. This really works uh, uh, in, in prospecting, in, in prospecting clients. So uh, if you're not used to apply uh, or if you already have enough clients and you would just like to make sure that they can still see what you offer, then prospecting is the best um, uh, thing for you to do. So it's an example of how you... Uh, it's an example of how you prospect or optimize your profile. Uh, don't put, um, uh, I mean, don't cap, uh, don't keep your profile hanging. If they, they, if they click your profile, make sure that it has uh, something uh, that can uh, do for the client. Especially if if you are in a community or a group where in clients are there, the best way for you to to prospect clients is um, you comment from time to time. Well, set a time, specific time that they can contact you, or that they that that uh, uh, you are actually commenting and um, replying to to clients or to their posts. And the main purpose of that is if they see you really helping out, especially nowadays that it's uh, uh, we're having worldwide pandemic. If they click your profile, hey, oh, Richie here is uh, is offering this. Oh, uh, Gladys here is offering this. So that's exactly the purpose. That is exactly uh, what the, the profile optimizing uh, will work for, for you as a freelancer. You don't need to really hop into all the job sites and, uh, you know, uh, apply. All right. But there's one technique that I am using. There's one technique that I am using, actually. Let me just end this one. Okay. So, all right. So, there's this one uh, technique that I am using for the starters uh, or newbies, for those who just um, uh, need to start with uh, the, uh, uh, the job sites. You no. Know? Uh, you can start with, um, with the cover letter make your application the best that you can uh, that you can have all right the best that you can have uh not uh, don't just send a cover letter that is um out from a template make it personalized if you can um add a um what do you call this add a wow video because when you are applying as a voice account they would like to hear from you so if you already attach a video of yourself, um, which will act already as your cover, I would say cover video or cover application, I would say, and then you introduce yourself, what are your services or what are your solution to the uh, job post that you're applying to, that would actually be a wow, um, I would say you are no longer going to have an interview. They are you are just receiving offers instantly. That's what I do and what I advise to those who are uh, having some thoughts of how can I apply for this job uh, job post if if in just five minutes or ten minutes they are there are already fifty or one hundred or even five hundred applications. So you might want to make sure that you are acing that part by submitting a cover letter that is really um, enticing and then add a wow video on it with yourself talking, personalizing, um, and making sure that you are uh, tapping what is being asked on the job post. And then the resume, should, it also works. If you can put in there um, some of the previous works that you can and the web portfolio really really works so i guess um i i covered everything <laughs> let me know if you have questions okay those are very very helpful
Florici. Um, and just to add um, to what he discussed, so I think it really is important to have an optimized profile across all social media channels. You know, uh, me personally, I get a lot of inquiries from Instagram, of course, LinkedIn, um, Facebook groups. You have to know where your target clients are right and um adding to what you mentioned about having a video resume i think it's very helpful especially in upwork um even on other platforms like free up they usually ask for a video resume nowadays you know so mm -hmm. that clients can gauge how your english speaking skills are okay all right so we're gonna um begin our q a so if you have any questions um please let us know drop them in the comments um by the way richie um just just wondering um for people who do not have any call center experience is this something that you would recommend um well i would say for those who doesn't have any call center experience there are a lot of tutorials um you can actually learn from um video tutorials on youtube um or i, I actually do um do train uh, for those who really doesn't have any experience on how to do voice accounts but um for those who um who would like to start on their own you can you can actually uh just start you know um honing your english skills because of course when you are a, a voice account a virtual assistant uh you have to have a very good english and communication it doesn't need to have an american accent an, a neutral american accent will do you really don't need to sound like um a very you know americanized uh, i mean you really don't doesn't need to sound American, but you need to have a neutral American accent. And you can learn by uh, reading a lot of books, record yourself. That's what I, that's exactly where I started. Um, I work for a Japanese company, so I really doesn't need to, to talk in English. But uh, since I, uh, I applied in, in call center, I don't have that specific accent that they're looking for. I almost failed that <laughs> my my first um, call center job. I almost failed that. It's just that they consider me because of the exam. I they said I almost I almost perfect. Uh, uh, I I took the exam almost perfectly, but I need to hone my accent. A neutral American accent would do. Um, the exercise that you can do is watch a lot of English movie, mimic them, or uh, you you have to um, imitate them how they talk. Then you record yourself doing that. Mm -hmm. You talk to your to your house uh, how household members. You talk to them in English, even though if you look like you know. <laughs> but that's how I started. I am talking to my daughter. I'm talking to my husband, even if they they if even though if I look funny. But you have to. If you're not if you're not that confident yet, you just record yourself. We have a mobile phone. There is a rec there is a recording, um, uh, I mean, app in there already built in. Most of the Android phone nowadays, you just record yourself, listen to yourself, and if you are able to be uh, confident with how you sound, then you you'll be also able to be confident in talking to to clients. It's just you know, uh, building uh, building your own skills. It doesn't mean that you need to, to enroll yourself, but if you have budget, then you can. You can enroll yourself to, to uh, those who are offering this um, uh, tutorial or mentoring. But um, yes, do you, do you need uh, to have an American accent? Neutral American accent. You just have to be clear. Um, I would like to share that part, but I, <laughs> I'm not prepared. But all you have to do is remember the picture. Um, picture means pitch, um, inflection, uh, what else? Um, you have to be courteous. You have to um, remember of your tone. Um, you, you have to have a clear understanding. 
of course, I meaning you have to uh, you have to have a good listening skills. And then R is rate. You have to make sure that you are talking in the same pace as with your uh, as with the person on the other line. And then E is for um, enunciation. You really doesn't need to have a very American accent, but clear pitch, a clear tone, clear enunciation would really help you a lot. I have a lot of um, a voice account virtual assistant that they really doesn't have an American accent, just very neutral. They just speak naturally and clearly on the phone. They read by the script verbatimly at first, and then they learn how to become a natural speaker on the phone uh, in the long run. So you just have to practice it. So if you are wanting to, the reason why I would like voice account, I really doesn't need to, uh, to learn about a lot of technical um, applications. All I need is just the script and then I will just talk. <laughs> I I just need how to dial the phone with 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 whatever soft phone the client will be providing, and that's it. I just need to have the the script and then the the CRM. No other things to train for. All I need is to know the in and out of the product or the services that I will be calling about, and that's it. No more technicalities. Just the requirement or uh, the standards or the quality perspective of the client and that's it mm -hmm. all you need to do is that basic um basic uh, english communication skills I would right say. exactly and i think what's really important is for your clients to be able to understand you and for you to be un able to understand your you know whether you're doing phone support or technical support you should mm -hmm. be able to identify identify and understand your client's concerns and you know i mean all of us were um we're all from uh non-native we're all non-native english speakers so we all started from scratch our first language is filipino and then eventually you get to practice learn more english um even my son who is four, uh, five years old he's learning english a lot from youtube so i think it's it's also very helpful for even for adults so try to immerse yourself in the english language watch everything english then speak um record yourself that's very helpful to record yourself and then review and if you have any mentor who can guide you with the pronunciations and other grammar um, language semantics i think that would be helpful right Okay, um, do we have any more questions? I think we answered this one from Chantal. Um, I don't even know what, what accent I have now. <laughs> Filipino. Filipino call center accent. I would say. But yeah, and, and as long as you have... Um, uh yeah as long as you have a neutral accent it's easy to understand i don't think an american accent is really required i wish i could have a british accent before um when i started i have that um yes just um neutral accent and then as you go along if you're talking to them every day you'll, you'll be able to adapt the accent actually you'll be able to adapt the accent um i used to work for uh, a UK company for over two years. So whenever I'm talking to them, I, I learned their accent. And then I also used to work for an Australian company. And the good thing is, um, it's almost the same as British accent. It's just a little uh, twang, I would say. Uh, you, you can actually adapt as long as you are using it and you are um, you are talking to them on a daily basis. It's like how many dials um, if you are really working for it in, in eight hours a day, which I used to do before, you, you are able to contact 100 people um, in that uh, frame, the, in, excluding all the fax numbers <laughs> and answering machines. You, you can actually do uh, 100 contacts in a day. So 
imagine talking to 100 people, you can actually adapt the, the accent. Uh, wh wh whether you like it or not. <laughs> right. So they, you'll be adapting practice, to your Practice accent. is key. You really need to practice and immerse yourself in the language. I think that goes for all language learners. Um, really? immerse yourself in the language. Um, that's why in Vanna, we try to have the English only policy, even with the, you know, even with the post, not everyone follows it, but <laughs> I think it's, um, it's a great help. And, and just to add, because I also wasn't very confident with speaking, even until now, I'm not a confident speaker. I joined Toastmasters, so, mm -hmm. Of course, now all the meetings are canceled, but you can still join online Toastmaster groups so you can practice your English speaking skills, not just the speaking skills, but your presentation, the way you present yourself, the way you um, exude that confidence that you need to be able to get your message across. So yes, do check it out. Um, all right. Any more questions? I think um, I think that's it. So, uh, what do you think is the? Because you mentioned a lot of different platforms. You mentioned Upwork, um, online jobs. What do you think is the best place to find um, voice account jobs? Um, for me nowadays, it's LinkedIn and Upwork. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn and Upwork for high-paying jobs. I would say um, I love online jobs page, but uh with regards i would say to the um offer um a little uh, low for low baller for for those who are uh, really tenured when it comes to voice account but for for the starter of course especially nowadays you you, do, you doesn't need to be choosy especially if you have work so you you may start with online jobs that ph it's easy to create an account in there because in Upwork, I know a I, I, I lot are being declined when it comes to submitting their profile. Again, the key in submitting the profile is just, uh, you know, uh, make sure that your profile stands, stands out in a way that you are offering and you're able to present yourself with, um, with, with the skills that you are, um, that you can offer. And then, LinkedIn is where the, the the clients are actually looking exactly for for your type of service. You just need to uh, to um, create your profile in there. Make sure that it's optimized. Make sure that once they see your profile, uh, it's it's already showing up what you can offer to them. Uh, make sure that it's professional looking. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and also your 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 Facebook. I also um, I'm also getting clients from Facebook. To be honest, mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting fa uh, Facebook clients. I mean clients from Facebook. All you need to do is make sure that you are um, posting everything professionally. Um, good uh, good takeaway from Miss Carrie. Start posting, even though a lot of you know Filipinos if they see you posting in English, they will call you my art and all, but <laughs> you have to start posting um, all in English, not um, text-to-speech type. We have complete letters uh, in the keyboard. Don't shortcut your postings. Uh, make sure that it's all in English. Um, install or add Grammarly as an extension. If you're not confident yet with your grammar, until now, I'm not confident with my grammar. So that's why I still have Grammarly in my um, Chrome. So that whenever I am posting and it's in English, uh, I know that I am confident that it will be um, read and understood uh, in a right way. So uh, you can start um, honing your English and communication, English communication by starting posting in English whenever whatever platform you are posting it uh, posting your uh, i mean wh whatever platform you're posting to all right great so um 
do you have um do you have any trainings going on right now any workshops um how can our viewers reach you further all right well um i have a community um it's called we do the talk hashtag we do the talk just search for that um we are having training but unfortunately we pause it uh, we just offered the last batch uh, for now, I would say we are reorganizing everything to make sure that it will be uh, worthwhile. But yes, I am offering uh, voice account training. I think I am the only one offering that <laughs> so that you, you know how exactly to deal with um, clients that are uh, that are looking for voice account virtual assistance. And you, must, uh, you may just search for we do the talk, hashtag we do the talk. Join the group. There are a lot of uh, free trainings as well in the group. Um, not just voice account, other um, digital marketing skills as well is in there. And there are free trainings. There are paid tra uh, paid trainings, low cost. I, I, I'm always saying it's low cost and high quality training. Uh, soon, hopefully, we can offer that. We, we stopped it uh, for now. Um, I have my graduating last batch uh, of graduate graduating class next week <laughs> wow congratulations <laughs> thank you i think that's very helpful um what you're doing especially during this time because a lot of people are looking for online work opportunities so again guys make sure that you join richie's group if you want to learn more about voice accounts all right, and um, any other last, since we don't have any more questions, any other last message to aspiring VAs, voice account VAs? All right, for all those aspiring uh, voice account VAs, uh, all you just need to do is make sure that um, you are confident um, with, with how you talk on the phone. Start with, um, with uh, reading a lot of English books, watching a lot of English movies, just imitate them and you're good to go, I would say. And um, watch a lot of um, YouTube tutorials of the actual calls happening. There are a lot of them on YouTube. And um, also you might want to um, make sure that um, your profiles are already positioned online. This is highly, um, highly recommended for those who, who came from BPO and call centers. This is the easiest way for you to hop in the home-based uh, world. Because again, no more other trainings. You just need to know how to speak English on the phone. You just need to grab, uh, you just need to understand uh, the script of the client, the, the in and out of the product or service that you are going to call, and you're good to go. Just be confident in applying and um, make sure that you are positioned online with a very good and professional uh, profile online. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richie. That has been a wonderful episode. Very, very helpful. So before we end this live, I just have a special announcement. Um, my agency, Social Prime, is hiring for voice account VA. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> timely, right? So if you're interested to work from home um, as a voice account VA, this is, this is actually more of a... Um, um it's a mix of customer service and a little bit of technical support but very easy um you can send uh your resume and voice samples or video resume to connect at social time just gonna type that here my voice account students you know what to do <laughs> yes yeah, so please send your resume to our hr department okay. and, all right so we, we finished another episode of van alive so hopefully we can do this regularly depending on my schedules and see watch out for me scary and uh, we do the talk live podcast oh. next, okay. next week <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah so i'll be i'll be joining richie too on her community right, right. 
Okay, so that's it for another episode of Vanna Live. Uh, hopefully, you can join us again next Saturday. And if you have any suggestions for our upcoming topics, don't forget to comment or send them to my page. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good day. Thank you, Miss Perry. Take care. Richie, bye. Bye. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.